Welcome back. Four weeks going into this election, there were uncertainties and anxieties. There are now realities. For one, polls missed major pockets of Trump voters again, turning what looked like a long shot into a real shot at a 2016-style upset. And for another, the blue shift, that record wave of mail-in votes vilified by Trump, has so far tiled the map, it seems, to Joe Biden. They are still being counted and they're still being challenged. So as we wait for clarity, let's turn now to two people who know the White House very well. Krish Omara Vignaraja, a former Obama administration official. David Frum, George W. Bush's former speechwriter and senior editor of The Atlantic. David, nice to see you again. So let's start Thank with you. you. What has changed for you over the last 24 hours in terms of, of how you're seeing this moment? Well, what, as we know more, we can see, first, it was a massive Democratic event. I mean, just absolutely stunning turnout, uh, stunning votes cast. Joe Biden will clear, looks like, at least 70 million votes, may, maybe more. Uh, the walls are closing in on Donald Trump's plan to hold on to the presidency despite losing the popular vote. Um, every hour, it seems, that, that uh, things get more difficult for him. Uh, but we're also moving into a, a realization, this is very much a personal defeat for the president, uh, that uh, the Democrats did not do well down the ticket. They did not do well in the Senate. They did not do well in the House. They did not do well in the states. Um, and so there's going to be a very divided balance. Um, in the immediate term, that means, and this is something probably of direct concern to Canadians economically, uh, is that there is going to be not the big fiscal stimulus in January that I think a lot of economists, a lot of Canadian households might have been hoping for, an ignition of economic activity. And down the road, it's going to be harder for the United States to do something about its de deficits mm -hmm. and bring its books into order and thus prevent the risk of inflation in years three and four of a Biden presidency. All right, Dave, thank you. Uh, Chris, you have spoken before uh, about how you believe the Trump presidency has sort of been, a, I guess, a stress test for American democracy. So what's your sense of how that democracy is so far holding up? Yeah, it sometimes feels like you look back at the last four years and it's like a home inspection test uh, where someone's come in and tested everything to the extreme. I think there is some healing um, that is longer term and it's tough for me to assess that at this point. But I do think when you look at, um, you know, as David mentioned, the numbers, um, the fact that we are on track to record, record 160 million votes, um, 24 million more um, than the previous election, uh, the fact that 66 percent of eligible voters um, submitted ballots, uh, the highest um, percentage uh, since 1900, um, it reflects that people were awakened in these last four years, um, that no one was complacent, that no one was sitting on the sidelines. Um, I'm also heartened by the fact that you did see a lot of people who were mobilized. Um, and while there were fears of civil unrest, uh, violence, um, political violence, um, you know, there really haven't been any real incidents. People are, uh, they're glued to their screens um, watching the election results come in, but they want to make sure that every eligible vote is counted. It does look like Trump's only option at this point is, well, to wait it out and hope the math turns out in his favor or keep contesting ballots coming in. David, where does where does the litigation strategy take him and the Republican Party? Well, in, in a funny way, he's got a problem because his party did so well. Um, the the it had the Republicans lost everything and there's been a debacle. It would it would have united Trump and the Republicans in the shared interest to fight everything. But I think you see this happening with governors like Mike DeWine in Ohio, with senators, um, that they're saying, you know what, we all did okay. We are holding our power. We are going to control the Senate, probably. We've got these huge majorities in the Supreme Court. And you, you always bugged us. So, uh, Don, welcome to your future all by yourself. And there you can see a kind of separation uh, that is happening where they are not standing up and joining him in his fight. So while that happens, you know, while that is their political ambition on the line there, what about the impacts, Chris, of the litigation strategy for Americans? I mean, regardless of whether the lawsuits hold up in court, what does the process do to them? Yeah, I mean, I think we have to contextualize the litigation strategy um, because in the last four, 24 hours, it's been a moving target. Um, last night, President Trump was very clear in terms of his strategy, which is let's shut down counting in the states that he was ahead and allow for counting in those that he wasn't. 
Um, today, it was uh, family members, um, you know, sharing uh, suggestions um, that were completely false in terms of, you know, ballots being burned. Um, and now, of course, it's the litigation in the three states. Um, I think what's really alarming is that the president telegraphed, even before the election, his strategy when it came to litigation, which was to bring it to courts in the hopes that it would go to the Supreme Court, um, which, of course, you know, he uh, did appoint two justices to. And I think the bigger implication is what does it mean if the Supreme Court actually does get involved? Um, I don't really see it getting to them, um, but I do think that's the implication of, of does that institution um, become uh, of concern um, because people feel like it intervened unnecessarily or that his justices uh, weighed in in his favor. All right, Krishomara Vignaraja, David Frum, thank you again for your insights.